Happy Christmas Eve, everybody. Hey, it's Lee with Junk Removal Authority. Hope you guys are doing great this morning. Just got back, or last night got back from St. Thomas. My wife and I were there for about six days. We had a great time, excellent time. We did a little sailing, sat on the beach for a while, enjoyed that, just kind of relaxed, read some books, did some thinking about business, just kind of hung out and had a good time. Also, we always make it a point when we travel, which it hasn't been as much as we'd like in, the recent, in these more recent years uh, this year, uh, we've, we've said, you know what, we're going to do one trip a quarter. So one quarter, every one trip a quarter, we're going to go somewhere from five to five to seven, maybe eight days and, and explore and really kind of start seeing the world. Um, still work hard on our businesses and everything, but you know, after a decade of very, very little travel, very, very little fun, I won't say that we've had fun, but very, very little travel. Um, she's got a business, her business or gym business that we started. She runs mainly in the evening and my stuff is all day every day uh so we're now getting to the point all right we've built something we can kind of start spending some bit more time together which is something we always said you know hey when we get to you know after the 10th year we want to be set where we can uh we can really start spending more time together so we're doing that anyway um so had an excellent trip and then this morning met a gentleman out of massachusetts who picked up a junk removal truck that we built for him he, uh, he actually came in town yesterday, but I wasn't going to be here today. He wanted to meet with me. I wanted to meet with him. So we, he, he got a hotel and we met this morning over breakfast and then he's taking it back to Massachusetts. Well, by way of DC, he's uh, visiting his son on the way back to Massachusetts. His son lives in DC. He's going to spend some, a couple days with him over the Christmas holidays. When I was speaking with him, he has got this really cool business concept. I think it's just brilliant. Um, it doesn't appear like it's really being done anywhere. It pairs well with junk removal and some other home services. And he asked if I wanted to participate in it. And I told him I had to really, really think hard about it because I think it's an excellent idea. There's a ton of money that can be made on this thing. A ton of people that can help. It's definitely a, uh, it's definitely a piece that's missing in the marketplace. And two years ago, I'd have jumped all over it. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be gung-ho. It's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's roll. Let's do it. What I've learned over the last couple of years though, is you gotta be really focused on just a couple things. And if you're gonna go into another business, it needs to be related to the current business that you're in. And this one kinda is, there's a couple ways of approaching this. This There's one way of approaching it that I wouldn't be interested at all. It's, it, 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 and the thing is, it might be the better way for his business to, to really grow and take off. And then the second way, it would kinda pair pretty well with JRA services. And it would still work well, and it still maybe is even better than the first way, but but I'm, I'm a, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not certain. And I'd be interested in participating in, in that because it's related to the service that I'm working on. So how, how does this relate to you, to, to y'all? I'll give you a story in the past. When I first started opening businesses and all, before junk removal, we, we had done, um, I, I had done a little car washing stuff, plane washing, uh, a few odds and little end businesses here and there. I traded some trailers. I used to buy enclosed trailers. I'd turn around and sell them and made okay money until I bought one that was bad. Lost a lot. And, uh, you know, I had always done these other little businesses here and there. Very little focus. Just trying to kind of trying stuff out. Trying stuff out, learning stuff. Very little focus. Though. I was going to do at one point, you know, I was working in a roller skating rink. I was gonna I was buying a trailer. I was gonna get all the equipment. I was gonna go around these different roller skating rinks throughout the country and repair their roller skates. That was one idea I'd had. And then I kind of fell into this junk removal thing. So probably a lot of you guys know the story. I was racing NASCAR, NASCAR style uh, or NASCAR late model stock cars. And essentially I ran out of money. And when I ran out of money, uh, I just got to the point, you know what, I'm gonna have to, if I'm, I love this racing deal, I'd like to give it another shot, but I'm gonna have to find a way to make more money in order to go racing. So I sold everything off and I was left with a pickup truck and trailer. So I put some flyers out, put some ads up on Craigslist, launched what became Junk Doctors and that was in 2011. And that business will do just shy of $3 million this year. Uh, we've got 12 trucks that we run on a pretty consistent basis. So we're in Raleigh, Charlotte, and Greensboro. Of 
great business and we've, we've built into something special, but it's actually probably taken us a lot longer to get to the point where we're at now had I had more focus. <laughs> because when within the first year of starting Junk Doctors, I had this idea, this concept, you know, we're gonna get into the flyer delivery business. So we're gonna have these flyer packets. They, they go in a plastic pack. You put a bunch of them as you sell to companies. So you earn revenue from companies and then you send out people and you go and you hang those flyers on the door. And we did that all of two deliveries and we decided flyer delivery wasn't for us and we weren't charging nearly as much as we needed to. If we would got, you know, seven or eight customers, but we were too cheap and it was way too much work getting, uh, getting those flyers out to the doors. And uh, we found it hard to hire people and we weren't very good at hiring people at that point. So that was a distraction. Shortly thereafter, I started a paper shredding business. And I was like, you know, there, there's a huge demand for this. There's big money to be made in this. So I go and I, I, I buy a shred truck. The shred truck wasn't all that expensive, wasn't that big of a deal. So the, the, I get some cans. So with the shredding business, you get these lot containers and you provide them to businesses and businesses put their stuff in and then on a weekly or monthly or however often basis, you come by, you get them, you bring them out to the truck and you shred them. Great, there's great money to be made in that business. Hell, shred it, I think it's a billion dollar a year company now. Uh, they bought out Centos and they bought out all the major players in the shredding shred game for the most part other than Iron Mountain. Just a huge, huge, huge money in it. So you can be you can become a millionaire off shredding. Well I did it for about a year and it was distracting from our main business. So you can make money in shredding, you can make money in drunk removal, but what was happening is that we were run, trying to run both and we were doing a pretty poor job at running both of them. So that was a that was a bad decision on our part. Alright, so at this point we're a one truck operation. Been in business maybe two years. Got one dump truck. Sold the trailer, or no longer using truck and trailer, just using one dump truck. So then we decide, all right, you know what? We need to jumpstart this thing. Hey, we got, we're making a little money. We, we, we make a little money, you know, on this one truck operation. Let's go ahead and move into Charlotte. Charlotte's about two and a half hours away. Let's move into Charlotte. Let's open up in Charlotte. So we go and open up in Charlotte. We buy another truck out of Texas. Shouldn't have bought that truck. Only bad truck we ever bought. That thing had a knock in it. Within the first 15,000 miles, the engine had seized up on us, and we were putting an engine on it. So we send that truck to Charlotte. Christian moves to Charlotte. He, get, he gets an apartment there. And, you know, he's been dating, dating his, who's now his wife, Brooke, for a little while. And Brooke, uh, she'd travel there. She'd, she'd go there, you know, once a week for a few days or whatever like that. Christian's not, all, not extremely happy, but you know what? He's, he's, putting, he's putting in the time for us to be successful in that market. Well, here's what happens. As Charlotte starts out slow, Raleigh picks up, and all of a sudden, Christian's gone. He's no, no help at all on the Raleigh end of things on getting getting jobs done. We have to hire more people in Raleigh. Charlotte's losing money. We're still not making enough money to support a, a different business that's losing money. And within two and a half months, we close down Charlotte. We had no focus. A few years later, I decide, you know what? I don't, Andy's List, you know, I'm, I'm a little irritated at Andy's List at that point. They've gone away from charging members. They were no longer charging members. Instead, they were, um, they, they adopted a model where they're going to charge adver the businesses advertising dollars. And I didn't like that. I thought, it, I, I thought the customer quality went way down. The leads, it, when Andy's List first started, were excellent because people were paying to be on the list. It was like they were qualifying them for the businesses. It was also a little dishonest because Andy's wasn't really putting out there, they were charging the businesses. A lot of the consumers didn't necessarily realize that. They, they probably figured it out. But anyway, the, the great companies, if they weren't paying Angie's List much money, they appeared much, much lower. So anyway, I came up with a concept. We were gonna do uh, a platform that would tie in with your Facebook account. And essentially, if people would rate companies, it would show the companies your friends had rated. So you could actually read what exactly your friends are, or friends are rating. And there's some other stuff in there. There's a neat concept. And you know what? The right person probably could have taken in that and made it very, very, very successful. None of these businesses I'm talking about are bad businesses. The extra location, you can make money with junk removal with an extra location. You, you could make a, a junk removal business in Charlotte can do great. Junk removal business in Raleigh can do great. A shredding company just about anywhere can do great. That concept for ask your neighbors might have worked. Somebody could have become a multi-millionaire, maybe a billion, maybe not a billionaire, but maybe, maybe, you know? Somebody could have made a ton of money on either one of those concepts. The problem is, is by trying to do it all, 
by not having focus on one thing, you are not doing a very good job at any of them. You can make money, you can become a millionaire doing just about any business at all. Where most people come up short is they don't focus on their main business. They lose track. Here's the deal. If you can 100% focus on your main business for five years, you're gonna have an excellent business. If you grow it hard and you 100% focus on expanding and growing your business for 10 years, you got a business that's probably world-class. Focus is the biggest differentiator from the entrepreneurs that make it and those that don't. So when you guys, when you're determining, let's think advertising, when you're determining what advertising you're gonna do, you can't do everything all at once. You wanna work your way to doing that, especially once you find what works. But you can't try one thing all of a sudden decide, you know, this doesn't work, grass is greener, I'm gonna move over to this thing, and I'm gonna go to this thing, and this thing, and this thing. So it's not just focusing on what business you're gonna do, it's picking a strategy and sticking with it. Because there's a lot of advertising out there. Most advertising works if you stick with it long enough. If you put enough money into it, you stick with it long enough. When you jump around, you remove time. And when you remove time, you remove a lot of the success that you're going to have with anything that you do. So think about the moves you're going to make, come up with a strategy, determine what business you're going to go into, attack that business, grow that business, focus on that one thing until that one thing is running fantastic and you've got the extra money, you've come up with a strategy, you say, hey, this new service or this new area, I'm ready for it, I'm gonna expand into it. And then you do that. If you go into new business or you go into new service, make sure it relates, make sure it has a similar customer base and has similar operations, but be ready to really focus in on that as well. Don't jump ship too soon. Don't chase the new shiny object. You can make money at anything you do. You can be successful at anything you try for the most part if you put in the focus and you have have the determination to succeed. Appreciate everybody watching. Please hit the subscribe button or the like button if you like this video. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Thanks again.